G'day guys, professional soccer player Lockie McLean here. Tune into my live interview with acclaimed radio personality Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. Hey everybody, this is Nick Mayhew, three-time gold medalist and three-time world record holder, and you're listening to Power 98.5. We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Hi guys, I'm Sam Fricker. I'm an Australian Olympic diver, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Empowering listeners from the US to the UK, live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are listening to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Whether you're tuning in on the iOS or Android app, Alexa, or streaming live, whether it be Live Radio FM, Radio Line, uh, Streamitter, Streamitter.com, any platform whatsoever, we appreciate you and being part of the family here with us. Great shows such as Catherine and Company, uh, Resilient You with Alicia Pazzoni. Uh, Terelia Hoskins, she's taking a little bit of a break. She's on holiday. Uh, but let me tell you what Lady T will be back. I know we've gotten some emails and comments uh, wondering when her show's coming back on. She will be back. However, she's taking a little bit of a break. She did graduate from university. She did get her uh, certification and degree in nutrition. So right now it's really building that platform that she's working so hard for. Uh, go to the power985.com website. You can click the bottom tick on the right-hand corner. If you got any comments, questions, if you'd like to be a guest on one of our shows, let us know. If you have any music suggestions, you can always email us at contact at power985.com or stephencuoco at gmail.com, S-T-E-V-E-N-C-U-O-C-O at gmail.com. Well, the jury is no longer out. We have got the one, the only, the best. He is my Aries brother from another mother. We've got Lachlan McLean. He is an Australian soccer player who plays as a forward for Northern Colorado Hailstorm in USL League One. I'm highly impressed that not only he's in Colorado, a place where I used to live, and I'm happy to say I won't live again unless there's a great opportunity because even though I'm from the Northeast, the winners in Colorado are brutal. There is no comparison. So I will take New Jersey, New York winter over Colorado winter any day. However, I am not going to miss by saying my visit to the Stanley Hotel was incredible. Um, if you are a Jack Nicholson, Jack Nicholson fan, Stephen King, you love the movie The Shining, definitely head on out to the Stanley Hotel. Lachlan, welcome to Live On Air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5. Stephen, it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you are very welcome. I had to get a, a lot in in that short amount of period of time because I didn't want to keep you waiting too long. You're you're busy. You've, uh, you were at an event today out there in Windsor, Colorado, weren't you? Yeah, they do this. Uh, it's incredible because Windsor is a pretty small town. Uh, for those that don't know, the north of Colorado, it's it's almost like the Midwest. It's pretty scarce few and far between when it comes to towns. But they did a, they, an amazing parade, and uh, we were walking in the parade representing um, northern Colorado Hailstorm. Um, and it was just incredible. You know, there was thousands and thousands of people lined the street and uh, lots of families and kids, and it was, yeah, it was a great day out. What were you doing? Uh, you were in, like, some type of – that wasn't a Mercedes truck, was it? You were there with, like, a couple other – fellow mates handing out things right yeah so it was a, it was a jeep very 
if, I mean, if it was a Subaru, I think that would be the icing on the cake for a Colorado <laughs> car, right? But but uh, it was second best in the Jeep, which is obviously still a great car. Um, a lot of the other the other floats had, you know, these big grand tractors and setups and stuff like that. So I think we uh, we just kind of threw together everything we could. You know, I wouldn't say soccer players are normally the most arts and craft hand on. So we settled for a car and uh, some little soccer balls to hand out, but it still was a good day. Congratulations on a 200,000 followers that you just shared with us today. Congratulations. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, like anything, it's a, it's a lot of hard work behind the scenes um, and it's, it's uh, awesome to see when, when it pays off. Well, it, it's super paying off. I mean, your numbers show it. Uh, th- you've got these comments. Like, it, your profile, hands down, is really, really clean. It's really professional. I, I, We were just talking about coffee. I love how you're, like, sitting there just recently from your post. What was it, on August uh, 27th? Like, you're there at the cafe, and you're like, yeah, I'm chilling with my villain. <laughs> yeah it's uh my, my addiction to coffee is is definitely not not something i would brag about but you know i, I love it there's there, there's nothing like catching memories in life you know and sharing it to the world so uh social media is great for that and uh, hopefully you know this is just the start for me so take it day by day week by week and year by year and we'll see what we can be this time next year you know what really strikes me about you is you know, you're a young, good looking professional soccer player. You you've been working in modeling, breaking through that. Um, you've got a tattoo on your right. I don't think they call that the forearm, uh, forearm, but that, that part that's on the upper, really, really smooth, sensitive side. God only knows if, if you did that sober or had a couple shots, but it says we travel not to escape life, but for life, not to escape us. I've got to know why that quote, where did it come from, and why did you place it there? So, yeah, it's a, it's a great question. I think, you know, for me growing up, born and raised Sydney boy, um, and there's – Sydney's a great place, and Australia is a great place to live, but there, there tends to be a culture there, you know, of go to school, go to university, get a job, have a family, and stay there. And There's nothing wrong with that at all, but – Growing up, I always felt like there was something more that I wanted to do and more that I wanted to achieve than just staying in Australia. And, um, you know, I had lucky enough, I was lucky to travel a bunch to soccer or football, wherever you are in the world growing up um, to some of Europe, England. I did love England, uh, Poland. I spent a a preseason there in the freezing cold. Uh, in 2015 before I ended up on the the shores of the US in 2016. Uh, And I think for me, you know, from there till now, this is my seventh year in the US. I've always looked at life like, you know, you got to take every experience you you can get hold of and, you know, live it out to its fullest. So for me, that's kind of where the quote comes from. It's about, um, you know, making sure you leave your imprint on the world and on your life. And uh, when you get old and wrinkly and you're looking back, you don't have any regrets. Is that the tree of life, the other tattoo with the coordinates, the south and the east? What is that? So that's uh, it's pretty cool. Growing up in, in, in Australia, you know, um, we have the most incredible views of uh, like beach sunsets, beach sunrises. Um, anyway, the place where I live had a lookout called McLean's Lookout five minutes from my house so with my last name being mclean i uh i went and got the coordinates of it tatted on my uh tatted on my arm because it's a pretty special place to me growing up and and what is the best part knowing you know we're going to go pedal back just slightly i want to thank everyone for tuning in truly i want to thank you for your love and support and also i'm going to assume you are uh, you know, Lachlan's fans, <laughs> I think you have a lot more than what we may realize because this is very, it's it's very awesome what's happening right now. Uh, for those that are tuning in, if you're not a Lachlan fan or don't know who Lachlan is, he is an Australian soccer player who plays as a forward for Northern Colorado Hairs. Hey, oh, this is the second time I'm screwing it up. Hailstorm 
in USL League One. I'm doing that, and I'm going to perfect it for you one more time, Lachlan. Okay. Lachlan <laughs> McLean is an Australian soccer player who plays as a forward for Northern Colorado Hailstorm in USL League One. Explain to us, what does it mean by being a forward? So, um, for, I would say, you know, for anyone that's unfamiliar with soccer, um, you have people that attack and defend like anything. Like, you could look at any expression, war, you know, there's attackers and defenders. NFL, there's an offense and a defense. Wherever you are in the world, there's there's one and there's the other. Um, and I am on the attacking side, so my goal, like my job, is to put points on the board. To put it simply, I, there's there's a ball, and I've got to put it in the back of the net, and that's that's really all I do. That's my job. If I get that done, I've had a good day. Now, did you pick that position, or was that something that happened to fit perfectly for you? So I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I, you know what? I definitely remember growing up. Um, mom and dad would tell me uh, when I was a little kid. You know, soccer's been my passion since I was, you know, four years old. Um, they would tell me, you know, on the old DVR sets with plug in, you know, the 2006 World Cup, and you'd be, uh, you'd have Ronaldinho doing um, scissors over the ball, and uh, Mum and Dad said that that would be me watching the watching the DVR doing scissors on the ground, and and wanting to try and emulate and wanting to try and be him. So I think from a young age, I've always, you know, my heroes, people who I've always looked up to, like for example, some some Australian players like Tim Cahill, Harry Kuehl, uh, they've always been attackers. Um, maybe it's the the ego screaming that I love the glory of scoring. Uh, could be that, <laughs> but I just like to think, you know, it's uh, um, growing up, they were the people who I looked at and who I aspired to be like, and that's what led me to uh, to where I am today. I want to play something for you. Take a listen. Lockie helps lead the way where he knows he's got an opportunity here to develop into a, a player at the next level. He certainly has that potential. He's a big time, big time athlete. He has a great skill set, but certainly someone who knows he he's ready to work for what he's given and, and he earns everything that that comes in front of him. So when he scores a goal or when he has a good game, it's not by accident. I think the work that he puts in helps lead him to those moments. So so they're great to see when they come. Tell us about that. What's going through your head right now, hearing that? Uh, I'm smiling from ear to ear. You know, <laughs> it's a, um, I was very lucky. Uh, Kale Wiseman is the coach of Southern Illinois University. Edwardsville, the uh, college that I went to, and he was my coach in my senior year. And Kale had a lot of faith in me, and he um, and he put a lot of trust in me out there on the football pitch. Um, and he, I owe a lot to him when it came to you know my path to becoming a professional player. Um, but pretty much, you know, my mentality and the way I've grown up my whole life is, you know. When I was younger, maybe I was injured all the time or I wasn't the biggest or I wasn't the fastest or I wasn't the strongest, whatever it was, you know, there was always a reason why there was teams that I missed out on. And uh, even if I had numbers and stats to prove that maybe I should have made those teams. Um, but honestly, those lessons that I learned growing up are some of the some of them that I value the most now because, you know, I think I learned humility and I think I learned that. You don't want to be the person that waits for the opportunity for success to come its way. You know, you'd rather work hard um, and fail, but know that you left everything you can on the table. Because, um, you know, I think when you work hard, that le that reaps the rewards and leads to success a lot more than it does failures. But at the same time, you know, those failures are, ju those failures are just as important to... Um, to lead to successes further down the road. So, yeah, I mean, Kale was just touching on, I think, you know, that's been my mentality since I was honestly a little kid. Um, growing up in my teen years, as I was saying, I was, I was injured quite a lot. Uh, and that was tough to deal with, you know, because I was watching people in and around me grow and develop and I was sitting on the sidelines. So I think I've always had that driving motivation to want to like intrinsically achieve everything I can for myself um, without relying on, 
others along the way. That's not to say I haven't had some incredible people help me along the way because I have, and I'm so grateful for that. But, you know, at the core of it all, I'm always thinking to myself when I wake up, what am I going to do today to make myself that 1% better so that in whether it be a week, two weeks, a month, three years, I'm reaping the rewards of that. Love it. Once again, we got Lachlan McLean. He's an Australian soccer player who plays as forward for Northern Colorado Hailstorm. Uh, we've got this and what you had recently said or a while back is I left Australia on a one way ticket to the U.S. Grant Gavin and Uncharted Brand go behind the scenes to see why I made this decision. Now, we played that short little clip. But who instructed you, instructed you or inspired you, or was it you to where you just got this, this incredible thought, this inspiration that flowed through you, Lachlan? And you were like, you, you told your mom, you told your dad, you said to your family, I'm doing this, I'm leaving, and I'm, this is me adding this now. I'm not coming back home permanently until I make for what I believe in in myself. Yeah, no, it's a... Uh... I'll never forget that day. Um, you know, homesickness has been tough throughout the years that I've been here. You know, it never gets easier. And I don't have any family here in the U.S. So now I'm seven years in to living here by myself. Uh, all my, all my great families back home in Australia. But I'll never forget that day when I was at Sydney Airport with my mum and dad, and one of my brothers was able to come. The other two were working. Um, and I just remember looking at them like just you know it's a sad moment but i just had so much faith in myself that i was going to achieve what i wanted to um i've wanted to be a professional as i said since i was a little kid and you know as i got older i realized that the best place for me to achieve that would be in the us so um when that you know thought came to fruition and i knew that's what i had to do there was no second thoughts about it because at the end of the day uh, one of the things and one of actually one of what one of my tattoos kind of represents uh for me is you got to live life with no regrets you know there's times when yeah you know, the last thing you want to be doing is looking back on looking back on life saying ah, i wish i did this i wish i did that so you know if i went home and the scripts were turned and i'd failed and i hadn't achieved what i wanted to at least i could look back and say that um, I'd done everything I could to get there. Luckily, that didn't happen, and luckily, I'm sitting here living out living out my dream as a reality. So I, you're just blowing my mind because I, I found a post dating, and I'm not going to get to it just yet. Uh, back on July 9th, I'm like so super inspired by you right now because I've, I'm going to be asking a big question. But before I get to asking this big question, I've got to ask: Who told you that? Colorado was the place to be and why Colorado? So one of my best mates, uh, honestly, family to me here, like I said, so my family's back home in Australia. Uh, it was the Salawas. They're a family that I met when I was at SAUE. They are from Chicago, but they loved Colorado. They came out here all the time. Uh, anyway, uh, Greg, who was my, my, one of my best mates in college, he moved to, uh, his brother moved to Colorado first and I came out here for Thanksgiving and I fell in love. Um, so for those that don't know you, we don't really have mountains in Australia. It's all beaches. Uh, and I'll never forget, I was in, for those that don't know, Boulder, Colorado is a city that uh, is right on the front range of the mountains in Colorado. And one of the heights there is called Mount Sanitas. And I'll never forget this day for the rest of my life. Where I was, It was Thanksgiving. I was with Greg and his family. And we went for a hike up Mount Sanitas. It was an overcast day. And when we got to the top of the mountain, we were above the cloud line. So all you could see was the peaks of the mountains above the cloud line. And it is one of the most surreal moments of my life. And when that happened, I thought to myself, I need to live here. Like, I need to experience this. So uh, midway through 2021, um, it was announced that there was a Colorado team coming to the league. Um, and, you know, I just got lucky. The coach reached out to me and... To be honest, I was sold for a minute one. Uh, I really wanted to come live here and experience it. Um, and again, lucky that my dream became a reality. And I've spent the best part of 2022 here now. How are you dealing with, well, I know you did post uh, about snow in, what was it, August or what? Or June or something like that? Like, have you experienced and really got hit <laughs> with the winter in Colorado? <laughs> I, I, 
I haven't. I'm very lucky, I think, for that because I've heard they are brutal. And so I actually had a little bit of visa trouble just coming in, you know, post-COVID in Australia. They're still recovering with the whole visa process and all that. So I actually didn't get in till March. But from all my teammates, I heard that there were some days in February which were just brutal. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't see snow that often. I'm like a kid at a candy store. Give me some snow. I'm that guy that's rolling around in it, sliding down the hills in it at 26 years old and everyone's looking over at me thinking, Jesus, what's this kid doing? But that's me. You know, I, it, it's, 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 it's new to me. I love it. Um, the cold that comes with it, I don't know if I'm really built for that. <laughs> but uh, it's all part of the experience, right? You know? Have you been in – you haven't been in Colorado the whole seven years, right? No, I haven't. So I spent the first four in uh, St. Louis, Illinois, and then the, the last two um, previous to this Colorado move in South Carolina. Uh, I did have one day uh, when it was, I don't know if anyone remembers, it was, just, it was a polar vortex that came through um, maybe the whole country um, 2018. And there was temperatures um, in Fahrenheit, maybe it was negative 30. That was, that was a crazy experience. But um, outside of that, I've never really dealt with proper cold. Mm. Well, even though you haven't dealt with proper cold, you're always turning the heat up. And now I'm going to get to the other big question is I just saw photos or a photo shoot you did for Too Hot to Handle back in what, 2021 or so. Did you officially cast for that show? Because if you did, I don't know why you weren't picked. Ah, uh, no. So that was a, <laughs> that was a, I, I do remember that. That was a, that was just a little joke that I had because I think the show was out and uh, I saw Harry Jowsey do the show and in my head, I'm dreaming of all the limelight and the star, the starhood that that, that, that kid has now. Um, so that was just a running joke I had with my teammates at that point. But, um, you know, I get told a weird amount that I shoot a love island or too hot to handle which i don't know if it's a compliment or an insult but you know maybe down the line that's in my future but i think for right now you know we're going to try and focus on modeling we're going to try and focus on on football and see what we can achieve in them before we we dive into uh my, my relationship life and uh, put it on national television <laughs> well you could always do the uh the bachelor or bachelorette i that's what i really see you most doing or maybe even uh discovery channel naked and afraid or survivor they would be a lot of fun i've always watched those shows and thought you know i i wonder what it's like to be on them yeah you know hopefully honestly hopefully in my life it's always been a bucket list thing for me to be on a tv show at some point so whichever one it ends up being um hopefully not naked and afraid that's that sounds <laughs> a bit like my bit like my worst nightmare but um, yeah, you know, maybe in the future that, uh, that, that will be there sooner than later. Cause even though you're 26, I look at time. I mean, time goes by so fast. We don't have in my world, I don't have 24 hours anymore. Uh, it, it's incredible of how today had flown by and you know, it's uh 625 your time, 525 mine. Uh, but it's incredible. It feels like I've only been within my entire day, four to five hours worth. Yeah, I agree. It is crazy as you get older, you know, the, and if I offend anyone saying this, I apologize because <laughs> I do have TikTok lives a fair bit and uh, people always laugh when I say this. But for me personally, as soon as I kicked over that 25, life started to fly by. Like I started to feel like properly old, like I'm thinking, God, I'm nearly at, nearly at 30. Look at all the stuff that I haven't done yet. And I'm just... About every second day, I'm nearly breaking down with a midlife crisis right now. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you are right. Time is flying, so you got to make the most of it. And that's why you're going to, you know, you end up doing television sooner than later because, I'm, you know, I've been in the industry, uh, if memory serves me correctly, of telling you, Lachlan, uh, over 30 years. And you have the perfect look, the perfect fit. Your physique is, like, on point. Uh, but – does age matter? No, but it does. And I'm going to honestly say that since you're in your 20s, sooner than later, you know, these television shows, unless you plan on doing a bachelor or bachelorette, 
they want somebody ripe with your age because you're not considered too young, but yet you're not too old. But yeah, when we think about most reality TV shows, if it's not a Discovery Channel, Naked and Afraid, or a Survivor, or maybe CBS Big Brother, nearing 30 um, is considered kind of old. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, yeah, I, I, you definitely sometimes, you know, I, I love watching that type of television and, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that for anyone that does have relationships like this because everyone's different, but I definitely will look at sometimes to see someone that's, you know, 28, 29, dating a 20 year old and you just like, is this really genuine? Like, feels like it's a bit of just a TV love, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I could not agree more with that. I've got to ask you um, if you're able to share with the Northern Colorado hailstorm. Are you, how long is your contract with them? And is this just a stepping stone before you go to a, a different league or a different team in a different state? So I, I'm a contractually in this league. It, it, it varies team to team, person to person. So, you know, I just take it day by day, to be honest. It's uh, it's one of those things where the level and the league isn't, super important obviously you know you always want to eventually move up and you know do the best you can i i, I think I, I am at a point in my life where you know happiness and comfortability uh, in where i'm living in the people i'm with uh is is honestly number one and uh you know that is something which i value a lot in this colorado area so you know, I could see myself being here a couple of years, but as I said, you know, you, I just take it day by day. We're uh, 23 games into the season, and it's been a pretty incredible year. We had a uh, earlier a run in the U.S. Open Cup um, where we beat an MLS team, which was a memory I will never forget. Um, so we've had great moments like that. Um, but yeah, you know, you know, then we got into the nitty gritty of the season and it's been tough, but on the back end of the season, it looks like we're turning good. So hopefully we can make a push for playoffs, maybe even a high spot in playoff and then see what we can do there. And maybe I can come home with a, with another USL league one title. But as I said, you know, taking it day by day and, uh, and when the end of the year comes, we'll reassess everything. In addition to everything that you've accomplished, Lachlan, what is next for you? I mean, besides possibly television, scripted, unscripted, um, is there anything else in sports, trophy, uh, becoming an award winner in what? What What will be the most proudest moment where you can say, you know what, I've made it here in the States, I've accomplished everything that I've wanted to accomplish, and now you can decide, do you stay or do you go? What will it take for you to get to that moment or to that point of self in feeling like you've made every accomplishment possible? It's a great, it's a great question. And, you know, I, uh, in the, in, in the world of soccer over here, you know, I feel like I have been blessed with the experiences, the opportunities and the success that I've had. Um, and what I love most about the U S is there's so many other opportunities available. So, Looking forward, I look at it like, you know, the world's my oyster in a sense of don't limit myself to anything, see what I can achieve, see what opportunities come up. And if they suit me, um, similar to what I was saying by just taking it day by day um, right now, you know, there's a few things potentially in the works, but um, they're still so early doors that, you know, you never want to jinx it or push anything too hard on it. But, you know, as I said, at least for me for the next for the next month and a half to two months, the most important thing is soccer. And then once hopefully I finish this year with another title, then I can reassess going into 2023, whether that will be soccer, whether that will be, you know, maybe a reality TV show, whether that is a uh, modeling career, career in television, you know, for me, it's uh, any and all of the above sound like great opportunities. When we think about success, and you've mentioned this in one of your videos, what does success look like to you, Lachlan, personally and professionally? So, you know, it, it's changed for me over the years. I think when I was younger, success always meant, you know, being the best. And it still definitely does to, to some regard. Uh, 
but you know growing up and you know dealing with as i said a lot of failures and a lot of knockbacks i think you realize that success has to have its own personal value for you uh so otherwise you're just going to feel like you're always chasing the shadow and and i do love uh, matthew mcconaughey said uh maybe it was in an oscar speech I, i'll never forget this when i watched this video he said you know, you want to be a hero in 10 years. And in 10 years, when you ask me who's going to be my hero, I'm going to say me in 10 years. And I love that. And I think that defines what success means to me personally. Uh, I think I always want to set goals and, you know, do my best to achieve them. Uh, but those goals be very realistic to my life and to, to uh, you know, what I'm trying to achieve. Uh, regard like outside of the let's be the best at this and let's be the best at that. Um, so that is what I would say for um, personally, professionally, you know, I would love to win another title in the USL league one. I would love to win one more title there. Um, professionally, I would love to, you know, small steps to start, get myself a gig in TV or, or uh, uh, a good modeling contract and see what I can do with there. But um, yeah, as I said earlier, I think for me, success, whether it be personal or professional, it always comes back to, you know, what am I trying to achieve? How long am I going to give myself to get there? And uh, hopefully I can make it. You will. I'm not worried about it at all. Uh, anytime God, the universe, fate, when it happens like this, and especially, you know, the feeling you had when we connected and the offering of you being like, hey, you want to be a guest on my show and just how it flowed and, and, and fluid it was. And Christina even said to me, as you know, my assistant, um, there was just something very magical about you in a way that you present yourself and how formal, but not overly formal, just how polite and just aware you are with the people that you're communicating with. That is not something you can necessarily teach anymore. It really is either an innate skill that you have to be very mindful and, and to be very, um, uh, very interested in somebody else and the opportunity whether it's made for you or not and you you showed really really good courteous behavior and i really want to say i'm proud of you and i'm very thankful for you for that or thank yeah, you I, for that yeah yeah i mean you guys uh here at how on 8.5 you run it's it's, it's honestly it was such an incredible opportunity steve and I, I'm very blessed for the, the opportunity to be on your TV show. Um, but you know what? I will I will tell Mama McLean that she did raise me well. <laughs> I will, I'll let her know that all those uh, you know spankings or send me to my rooms or naughty corners did pay off in the end. So I'm sure she'll be happy with that. Absolutely. And a big shout out to your mom. And if you don't mind me saying to your dad, David. Absolutely, absolutely. It was Father's Day in Australia yesterday. Was so, it? Um, uh, well, I guess he, two days ago because Australia is in the future. But yeah, happy Father's Day to the big man. Oh, happy Father's Day to Mr. David McLean. I'm going to play a little clip for you. Uh, I did not take a listen. My team sent this over, but uh, it looks like it's going to sound good. We've got Lachlan Mc, uh, McLean with a goal versus North Carolina FC. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that was uh, that was very recent. That was uh, what Saturday night, uh, just the previous Saturday and Labor Day weekend. Yeah, let's go play this clip. And it will be served up by Rogers. Saw him in the opening package, a goal and seven assists, and he is just absolutely fantastic on services. So, an opportunity for Hailstorm to strike first here on the set piece. In all the way through, ball is in. The back of the net. McLean gets his fourth on the campaign, and it is one nothing. Hailstorm. High in the air, ball bouncing around, and just finds the feet of Latchelon McLean. And the man from Sydney, Australia, makes it a one nothing affair early on. I love finding clips like this and having my team be like, hey, did you see this? <laughs> love 
it. That was a good moment. I, uh, it was actually, so uh, there's a there's an Aussie, Tim Cahill, one of the best, sorry, probably I would say the best to ever play as an Australian. Um, and he had a signature, signature celebration where he would run to the corner, the corner flag and punch it like a boxing kangaroo. Um, so, you know, on a smaller scale, I train emulate him because he was always an idol to me so when i score on occasion i run to the corner flag and uh and give it a punch and that was the first time i was able to do it all year um so it it definitely was a special moment for me i want to thank you very much uh lachlan mclean for being with us today on live on air with stephen quoco on power 98.5 satellite radio for all things lachlan you can head on over to his instagram and I've got one more question for you, but uh, his Instagram handle is Lockie underscore McLean, L-A-C-H-Y underscore M-C-L-E-A-N. And your TikTok is the same, Lockie underscore McLean as well? Yeah, yeah, exactly the same. Why Lockie? Where did that come from? Uh, did we lose you, Lachlan? No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, I, sorry, I missed that. <laughs> no, no worries. Uh, why Locky? Because I know you uh, call yourself that for sure. Ah, uh, okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, it it it, it muffled on my end for a little bit. Um, it's I don't know. It's I, it's like a, just a really Aussie expression. I think you know, Mum always calls me Lachlan, and uh, I was lucky growing up with my mates. Um, so I didn't do Lachlan because it just feels a little. Uh, it was a little like uh, mum's punishing me if I get a Lachlan. So I keep it short, <laughs> short and sweet, Lucky. Uh, and uh, it's always a bit of fun because it's not a very common name here in the US. So when I go out and I, uh, you know, whether it be going to get Starbucks in the morning or to a bar or whatever, if I ever say Lucky, people always look at me and I get Lucky, Lucky, Lachly, Lockley, and just about everything else in between. So it's good fun. Oh, my. <laughs> Who would you like to give a shout out to? Um, I would love to give a shout out to um, one of my boys back home, Boyd Blackburn. Right now, he uh, he uh, is just about to apply and hopefully get a job here in the U.S. in San Francisco. So it's nerve wracking times for him, but um, I'm uh, I'm sure it's all going to work out, and I'm sure he'll be over here with me soon too. So uh, big shout out to that. To the, to the big man. Awesome. And big shout out to your mom and dad. Uh, happy Father's Day to your dad, David. And uh, yeah, all things Lockie McLean, L A C H Y underscore M C L E A N. Any drops you want to offer us at all? Anything that's upcoming for you? Anything? No, I don't know. I think, I think that's it. It's been a, it's been a really good experience here. Uh, and I really enjoyed talking today to you today uh steve i appreciate it you're very welcome thank you to everyone for being with us today with Lockie mclean um you know go to you know not just his instagram but head on over to the tiktok there's a lot more there he's building is growing fast and let's i want to bring you back on uh lachlan you're at tiktok how the heck are you doing what you're doing? Because you lip sync to a lot of things, but yet your numbers are extraordinary. Yeah, it's <laughs> my TikTok's an interesting place. I would say proceed with caution. You know, I tried to, I tried to keep it, you know, true to myself, but at the same time, there's definitely maybe one too many thirst traps in there, <laughs> and uh, and. Uh, and maybe not enough soccer, but it's uh, it's been a great app to me. I love being on there, and I love being a part of it. Um, and I think I'm 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 closing in on hitting the uh, million followers, so that's going to be a pretty special moment. Oh my for me. god! Wow, million. Okay, so a million followers on TikTok. Congratulations, two hundred thousand on Instagram. Can you imagine once you get on TV? Because I'm going to tell you, it's power once you get on there. One can one can only dream, you know. One can only dream. We'll see. We'll as as we say, you know, we'll take it day by day, and if that opportunity comes, I'll uh, grab it by the horns and see what I can do with it. So, <laughs> you will. I'm I'm confident in you. 
Thank you again uh, to you, Lachlan, for being with us today. And thank you to everyone who's tuned in live, whether it be the iOS or Android app on Alexa, uh, Streama, Streamitter, uh, Live FM Radio, um, even on the power985.com website. And uh, we still have a lot of listeners that like to just go to the website and use that. So if you're, whether you have a phone that has an app or you really don't feel like downloading an app, there's, you can just listen to us anywhere, even on the power985.com. Go and click on a bottom right-hand tick on the website. Send us any messages. Maybe your thoughts on what you think about this interview with uh, Lockie McLean. And once again, L-A-C-H-Y underscore M-C-L-E-A-N. We are going to air this episode uh, Tuesday. It's going to be tomorrow, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Once again, 2 p.m. Eastern, all great things of Lockie McLean. And uh, we'll, we'll be coming back with you with another guest very soon. Could give you a drop, let you know who it is. But uh, sometimes I like to uh, keep things in suspense. So thank you again. Hope you guys had a safe holiday weekend. And we look forward to having, having you with us on future episodes. You're live on air with Stephen Cook on Power985.com.